The headlines on Reporting Scotland. The majority of NHS staff are offered a pay deal of 9% over three years. And Andy Murray is in action at Eastbourne as he takes on three-time Grand Slam winner Stan Vavrinka as part of his warm-up for Wimbledon. Good evening. NHS staff in Scotland are being offered a 9% pay rise over the next three years. The pay increase is for nurses, midwives and other health workers earning up to £80,000. It's still to be agreed upon by NHS union members. Our health correspondent Lisa Summers is at Edinburgh Royal Infirmary tonight. Lisa, good evening. Good evening, Sally. Yes, this deal is still to be decided on by union members. But you'll recall that uh, earlier this year, the UK government uh, negotiated a pay deal for NHS staff in England. That was a pay increase of 6.5%. Now, as a result of that deal, that meant money was available uh, to the Scottish government. And they said that they would earmark that for a pay increase for NHS staff here. But what they want to do is they want to top that up to this 9% figure that they're talking about. And to do that, they have to find funds from elsewhere. They say they have earmarked money for this, but it won't come out of the current health budget and so inevitably there will be implications for spending elsewhere. 147,000 people across Scotland are involved in this pay offer. It would see their salaries go up by over 9% after three years. It will, says the government, make these NHS workers the highest paid in the UK. We believe that NHS staff deserve this pay offer. Obviously we've had a period of pay restraint and that has been challenging for uh, NHS staff. So this uh, at least 9% over three years will uh, be a well-deserved uh, pay rise and it will be one that will be fully funded partly through Scottish Government resources and partly through the consequentials from the English pay deal. The proposed deal will affect staff such as nurses, porters and paramedics. It doesn't include doctors, dentists or senior managers. The Royal College of Nursing says it would be the biggest pay rise for nurses in 10 years. There's been years of austerity and we also have changes within the, the workforce in relation to the ageing workforce and, and also around about how we sustain our, uh, the NHS in the future. So it's very, very important that we both retain individuals who are currently working within the service but also attract new people to come and work in the NHS in Scotland. That's why today's proposals are positive and it's now over to our members to make a decision whether they think it's uh, a, a deal for them to support. Other unions say the deal is not perfect, but the best that can be negotiated. But one, the GMB, that represents lower paid workers, say they want members to reject the proposals. They say it doesn't do enough to support the less well off. So what now? Well, the First Minister has already proposed a, or, or said that she will give a 3% increase to salaries to staff from next month. But members will be asked to go and scrutinise the detail because there are also some proposals to change terms and conditions down the line. Well, as I've said, most of the unions are lending their support to these proposals, saying it is the best deal that they can get. But ultimately, it will be up to union members to decide. They will have to ballot on this and we're expecting to hear for sure whether the deal has been accepted in in the middle of August. Lisa, thank you. The SNP are to refuse to back the expansion of Heathrow Airport in a key Commons vote this evening. The UK government want MPs to give the go-ahead for a third runway, which they say would boost the number of flights to and from Scotland. But the SNP say they're concerned about a lack of detail in the plans and they will abstain in tonight's vote. Well, our Westminster correspondent David Porter is outside the Commons for us this evening. David, at last we're going to get a decision on Heathrow, finally. At last and finally, after decades of sitting on the fence on this one, it is time tonight for MPs for Make Your Mind Up time. They will be asked to back the expansion of Heathrow and specifically the building of a third runway. The UK government say that it will literally put billions of pounds into the whole of the UK economy, wherever people may be. They say it is the biggest transport decision in a generation. Now, traditionally, both the SNP government in Edinburgh and SNP MPs at Westminster have backed the expansion of Heathrow because of the economic benefits it will bring to Scotland and the fact that it will free up more slots for internal travel throughout the UK. But more recently, SNP MPs at Westminster 
Westminster say that they have not been given guarantees by the UK government, therefore they cannot support the plans tonight and they will abstain. They deny they are playing politics with this issue. They're looking to do the best for Scotland. As I say, the Scottish government's uh, signed a memorandum of understanding with Heathrow Airport. They've worked closely with Heathrow Airport. Now for Don going to discussions with them. It's just the UK government. The UK government's already shown that they can't be wholly trusted, so it's not us doing the politics. UK government overrode uh, the wishes of the Scottish Parliament in terms of EU withdrawal bill and have also fallen short on other commitments. So it's, we, we need to be able to trust the UK government rather than the other way around. The way the parliamentary arithmetic is stacking up tonight, the UK government should win this fairly easily, but that doesn't mean it is a done deal. There will be planning application, there will be legal challenges. It could easily be a decade before that third runway is built and all the consequences thereon in. Uh, more immediately, the issue will feature at the Scottish Parliament tomorrow when the Scottish government will be questioned on the implications for Scotland of this decision tonight. Thank you, David. A man has gone on trial at the High Court in Glasgow accused of sexually abusing six boys between 1970 and 1990. 71-year-old Jim Torbett denies all the charges against him. The boys were aged between 4 and 14 when the alleged abuse took place. He's accused of assaulting some of them at locations including a football training ground in the east end of Glasgow. A lawyer who told the Edinburgh Tram Inquiry about potential fraud was exhausted and jet-lagged when giving evidence, according to his former employer. In October, Andrew Fitchy agreed that city councillors had been given false information when preparing to sign the multi-million pound contract. However, the law firm DLA Piper have asked Lord Hardy to consider Mr Fitchy's evidence in context. Stephen Godden has more. The inquiry into what went wrong with the Edinburgh Trams project heard hours and hours of evidence. Andrew Fitchie stood out. The project lawyer was asked whether he knew that councillors were given false information about the risks before signing the multi-million pound contract. I agree that the information in those, in those closed reports was deficient. Well, if it just it's more than deficient, isn't it? It's not, it's not, it wasn't accurate. Yes, my lord, was it not accurate. True, it wasn't true. Correct. So it's false. <laughs> yes. And the consequences? You hesitate there because you know the legal significance of knowingly providing false information to someone, don't you? I do. Because it amounts to fraud, doesn't it? It, it potentially is a criminal offence, yes. And, you, and a civil one as well. And you were aware of that? in May 2008. You were aware that's what was happening. Eight months on, his former employers are asking Lord Hardy to consider what was said in context. The law firm DLA Piper say that Andrew Fitchie was clearly exhausted when he was robustly and rigorously cross-examined. The reason was that the day before, he travelled to Edinburgh from the west coast of America. Essentially, he was jet-lagged. The written submission also says initially the documents put before Mr Fitchie were highly selective. They point out that later in his evidence he told the inquiry that read as a whole he didn't believe the documents were misleading, one of many things for Lord Hardy to consider in his final report. Stephen Gordon, reporting Scotland. The Royal Mail has launched a new campaign to raise awareness of dog attacks. It says more than 200 postal workers have been injured by dogs in Scotland over the last year, and the problem gets worse over the summer. Owners are being advised to keep dogs away from the letterbox and not to open the front door unless their pet is under close control. Royal Mail also says dogs should not be allowed to roam around the garden when the mail is likely to be delivered. Well, first it knocked me, knocked me to the ground and it started biting me on my arm, my right arm and my hip. And, uh, and I just started shouting out for help. It's a kind of isolated property, so there wasn't really anything about. So, but fortunately, the, the owner was in and came, came out and intervened to kind of get the dog off of me. Andy Murray's tennis return continues. The former British number one is in action at an ATP event in Eastbourne as he decides whether to compete in Wimbledon, which gets underway next Monday. He's up against another player who's on the comeback trail, Stan Wawrinka. Here's Jane Lewis. <laughs> Some much needed action for this pair, with both coming back from injury. Wild card entries for Eastbourne, with Wimbledon looming. 
And Murray was looking good early on, moving well about the court and first blood to the Scot as he broke the Vavrinka serve to lead 3-1 in the opening set. After hip surgery, Murray has fallen to 156th in the world rankings, while a knee operation for Varenka means he's further down at 225. And Murray certainly looked more in control out on court as he raced to the first set, 6-1. With Wimbledon on Murray's mind, this was a further test for the former world number one, but one so far he looks to be coming through well. His team, no doubt, fairly happy watching on, with that decision over Wimbledon no right to still so. to be made. Jane Lewis, reporting Scotland. Just time for the weather. Here's Christopher. Sally, thank you. Hello there, good evening to you. Well, it's been dry, warm and sunny for many of us today and those conditions lasting throughout the week ahead. Plenty of sunshine and blue sky, although it did turn somewhat hazy at times. And it hasn't been like that everywhere. You can see a stripe of cloud affecting the Hebrides up towards the Northern Isles. 13 degrees there in Stornoway, but the mid-20s through Aberdeenshire this afternoon. And it's all down to high pressure, which is here to stay. And that means, for some, heat wave conditions, but also highly likely to get burnt with high or very high UV levels. Now, tonight, it's dry and clear. There'll be some low cloud affecting eastern coastal parts, and that will drift on shore at times. Temperatures around 7 to 11 Celsius, light winds, and some cloud up towards the Western Isles and Northern Isles. So tomorrow, there's that area of high pressure which will stay in play throughout the week, bringing dry, sunny and increasingly warm weather. Now tomorrow morning, there will be some low cloud around the east coast, but that could uh, just linger at times, giving some mistiness, but most of it should burn back. For most of elsewhere, it's dry, bright, sunny and warm. Temperatures by mid-afternoon up to around 26 degrees across west central Scotland. If you don't like the heat and can get to the coast, it will be fresher there with onshore breezes. Towards the east coast, it will be cool where we have any lingering low cloud, but come inland not too far in temperatures easily, up to the high teens or low 20s. A warmer day for Lewis and Harris, as indeed it will be for Orkney compared with today, 17 degrees there, but uh, still a little bit cooler for Shetland with some lingering cloud. Rest of the afternoon into the evening, plenty of sunshine to end the day, but that low cloud again around eastern coastal parts. Wednesday, midweek, and it's another dry and sunny day, a warm day, hot at times, temperatures up to 28 degrees. Again, a little bit cooler around the coast, but even Stornoway there, up to 22. And looking ahead towards Thursday, more of the same, dry, hot, sunny, temperatures perhaps up to 29 degrees. That's the forecast for now. We'll take all the sunshine you can give us. Thank you, Christopher. And that's Reporting Scotland for now. I'll be back with the Late Bulletin just after the 10 o'clock news around 20 to 11 this evening because of the football. Until then, though, from everyone on the team around and across the country, that's it. Have a very good evening.